The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his new creation by water and the words. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth, her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food. And to one hope she presses, with every grace endued. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, you've seen me maybe a time or two before. My name is Father Jonathan Sorensen. I'm very happy to be here with you this weekend. Uh, this evening, as Father Josh is working with the Diaconate Formation Program, and with Father Hoke. Today, the Lord speaks to us in the scriptures about his anger about anger and the place that it has and what it has to do with us and how forgiveness and the Lord's own way of giving from his heart mitigates anger and how forgiveness instead of anger is given to us by the Lord. Let us turn on our listening ears and listen to the sacred scriptures and prepare our hearts for this sacred mass by calling to mind and acknowledging our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have laid down by your precepts of charity that we should sincerely love those who afflict us, grant that we may follow the commands of the new law, striving to return good for evil, 
and bearing one another's burdens. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sin? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills, redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us nor does he require us according to our crimes. Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant. I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. I was talking with uh, Father Josh as well as Father Neil Hoke, who's, uh, who I think a lot of you would know. He was here for a number of years back. We were talking, and uh, we're, all, we're all getting old, you know. We were talking about getting old and things like that. And the truth is, you know, none of us have a whole lot of hair. But when we, grow, when we forget to shave it or it grows out a little bit, you can see the gray that's in there now. As I, I, I say, the, I didn't have it before I was pastor. Being pastor gave me gray hair. We were talking about getting old. As we get old, we, we learn a lot of lessons about ourselves because we have lot of, lots more life experience that we go through. One lesson that I learned about myself a number of years back is that I am not supposed to be in charge of big events. Uh, and that's because I had to. And uh, the event was great. But there, there's, there's two parts of being in charge of a group of people putting on something, right? There's the, uh, the output, and there's the process by which you get the output done. It's a leadership, uh, leadership issue, right? One is, what's the end product, which the event was fantastic. Made lots of money, lots of people came, it was great. Process. Is the group that, does the group that put it on, are they better friends by the end, or are they all enemies and at odds? And I found that I'm not very good 
at leading people through process because <laughs> I'm too focused on output and details. Now I was working with a friend of mine in the parish and, uh, and that weekend was just a bad weekend. I was very stressed over the event and I actually I got really sick partly I think because I was really stressed over the event and of course it's on a weekend and I got mass going on and all these things. And I get down to the parish hall where the event is going on and someone had moved some chair racks and I came unglued over some chair racks. And I was, and I was, I lost my cool about it. And my friend, who I worked very closely with in the leadership of this, she thought that I was mad at her. And I wasn't, I was just being mad in her presence. But that's hard to distinguish in the moment. And it really hurt her. Right? And, and that, that, it's the lesson that I learned is I'm not supposed to be in charge of events like that. I'm better at being told what to do and then getting those details done when it comes to these kinds of things. But my friendship with her has never been the same. Are we still friends? Yes. Uh, did I go over to their house and their family events a lot? Yes. But the friendship was just never the same because I hurt her in that moment. She was hurt by me. And even though I really do believe that she, she has forgiven me and really embraced me and still I am still welcome in their home and come to all their family events, it just isn't the same because of the wounds that I put on her heart. Life lessons you go through, and sometimes we recognize the damage that we do and we strive not to repeat it. What do we do with forgiveness and the human heart? In the Gospel today we hear, unless you forgive your brother from your heart, from your heart, not just forgive him, well, yeah, I forgive you, from your heart, from the place where we are wounded. Unless you forgive like that, from the place where you have been wounded, it's not real forgiveness. That's a, that's a really high bar. I know in my own life, having been wounded by other persons, I can think of cer certain authorities when I was in seminary and, and other times of events, I'm a little reticent. I'm a little reticent to care for them. But, I nonetheless, write a letter or try to pray for them, etc. One of them's dead, so I pray that he rests in peace. That's a good thing. It's easy. But forgiving from our heart, from the wound of our heart, is a difficult thing. Imagine what it was like for the Lord. The Lord who came out of the goodness of his heart, came to us. Came to us to provide us what? Everything that was good to teach us, to lead us, to forgive us. And what did we do? We put him on the cross. How lonely that must have been on the cross. How wounded he was not so much from whips and scourges and nails, but in his own heart. You are the people whom I have loved. And you wound me like this. And yet, an important moment still occurs in the life of the Lord. We read about it in John 19. There, in the very, towards the very end of the Gospel of John, John, who is writing the Gospel, says, And then the soldiers came by the Lord, they found that he was dead, and instead of breaking his legs like the other criminals, they took a lance and they thrust it in his side. And immediately there poured out what? Anyone remember? What was it? Water and blood. Water and blood came out of his sight. And, and, the, and John, in writing his gospel, says, water immediately poured out blood and water. 
and I really saw it, and I was there, and I, my testimony is true, and you have to believe me, it really happened. Not exactly those words, but he goes on and on and on about, about that moment. Something key in that moment that he goes on and on and on. You have to believe this. That the Lord Jesus Christ, out of a wounded heart, still provided. What is the blood and water if not baptism and the Eucharist? That we can still have a life with him, that although we have wounded him, his forgiveness is such that he still desires us. So intimately, he wishes that we be one. And the Lord commands in the Gospel today that you must forgive your brother from your heart. He's not commanding something that is easy, but he's also not commanding something that is impossible. Maybe on a human level, like my friend, like my friend who still, I created a wound on her heart and I think she's forgiven me, but the relationship hasn't been the same. On a human level, Maybe that's not a possible thing, but on the level of the Lord, with whom we are united, who lives in us and who lives in our hearts and who heals our hearts, on his level in us, it is possible. The woundedness of our hearts keeps us from truly forgiving from reestablishing peace, but the woundedness of our hearts can be healed by Christ himself. Brothers and sisters, in the sacraments that we receive, these are not mere things that we just get checked off for the week or that we just do out of mere repetition, but when we bring truly our hearts to the Lord Jesus, in a life of prayer and of good works, in sincerely devoting ourselves to receiving his sacraments, and I would say especially Eucharist and the sacrament of penance, we receive a healing, a healing of our very hearts. And that as we confess our own sins to him whom we have wounded, and as we receive in Holy Eucharist him whom we have wounded, he heals us through his own wounds. And in receiving forgiveness, we are made capable of forgiving. I suppose that's why we pray immediately before we receive Holy Communion, in the words of the Our Father, Forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, as we forgive who? Those who have wounded us, no? As we receive Holy Eucharist this evening, offering our hearts to the Lord, let us call to mind the woundedness that we have there and receive him who is the physician and healer of our hearts, that he may heal the wounds of our hearts. And having received him and his healing, that we may in turn forgive and be part of the healing of hearts of others. The Lord Jesus commands us to forgive from our hearts, but we must receive from his own heart so that we can fulfill what he has commanded. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In trust of the Lord who forgives us our sins, let us offer to the Father these prayers and petitions. For the church, may God help us to be reconcilers and peacemakers by extending ourselves in passionate care and empathy to the alienated, the unloved, and those who are overwhelmed by stress at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that have been hurt physically and mentally, may the Holy Spirit give us the courage to forgive and the strength to rebuild those relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering due to the various fires and floods across our nation, May God help them find the resources they need to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God hear and answer the prayers we each hold deep in our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and gone before us, especially the first responders that have died in the line of duty, may they be marked with a sign of faith so their reward will be great in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intention this evening, Ralph and the repose of the soul of Wilma Berger and family, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. O Lord our God, hear the prayers that we offer you in faith, and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of St. Patrick, and of all the saints in heaven, grant them if they be in your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, which will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. In our longing to be at peace with everyone, O Lord, we offer you this sacrifice for those who are against us, and we commemorate the death of your Son, through which, while still enemies, we have been reconciled to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name all that you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and lowly, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and Let us pray. Through these mysteries of our peace, grant, O God, that we may live in harmony with all and bring those who are against us to find favor with you and be reconciled to us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. During communion time, I, there, was someone that's very, there was someone very upset. I could still hear them. They're very upset. And I know exactly what they're upset about. We really miss music at Mass, don't we? No. Oh, there's something beautiful about the silence as well. And you know what? And, and, and there's something beautiful about babies, too. We love babies. Babies. All right. There's something beautiful about the silence at Mass. And I, I just find in offering Mass in various parishes, there's just there's a richness that is there found in the Mass in the silence. So just use that as great prayer time. Thank you very much for having me here. It's so wonderful to be able to offer Mass with a community. As I'm in full-time studies, I don't have a parish of my own at this time. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, we have actual announcements. Please be seated for the actual announcements. Our monthly brunch will be returning next Sunday from 9 till 12.30. Remember to get your raffle tickets and money turn in by next weekend at the parish office or in the collection box. The drawing will be held at the brunch next weekend after the 11 a.m. Mass. More tickets means more chances to win. Our religious education classes will be starting September 30th. That is just a few weeks away. We are still in need of few teachers for the preschool and a few other helpers. If you are interested in helping, please stop and see Janelle Morehouse, our DRE after mass in the gathering area. She also has registration forms for anyone who has not yet received one or needs to register their children. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. My cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ. 